Hello and welcome. Today we're looking at this idea of cell differentiation and how that leads to cell specialization. So we can start all the way at the beginning. We can look at a sperm cell and at the top there we've got a diagram of an egg cell and when an egg cell meets the sperm cell the two nuclei join together. The two cells fuse in other words or join together and we have a fertilized egg and that fertilized egg is the first cell in producing a new individual. Now, once that cell has been, or the egg cell has been fertilized, it will then begin to divide. And we'll get two cells, then four, and then eight. And we end up with a ball of cells which are all very similar to each other. We can refer to these as stem cells, or sometimes they're called embryonic stem cells. But the key point is that they are all what's called undifferentiated. They're all very similar to each other and they don't have the specific parts they need to carry out different functions. They are undifferentiated cells. So it, the next stage in the process is the cells actually begin to differentiate. So this happens very early on in the development of a new individual. The eight cell stage is usually reached by about three days where the cells are all very similar but after that they start to develop into the kinds of cells they need to be in order to make a new individual. So after about three days, the undifferentiated cells, they begin to differentiate. Now, what does it actually mean to differentiate? Well, as we've mentioned in a previous video, we need different subcellular parts in different kinds of cells. So what the cells do is they start to make the different types of subcellular structures they need in order to become the different, different types of cell in the body and therefore making the different types of tissues. So for example, a subcellular structure is mitochondria or our mitochondria. So different cells have different numbers of those and those will be produced for the different cells very early on. Once they ha have the subcellular structures they need and the structure they need, they can carry out a particular function for the body. We say the cells have now become specialized. And we've talked about some examples of different cells in the body, so we can just revisit that. One type of cell was the muscle cell. So there we've got a few muscle cells together. That would be actually called muscle tissue. So that's one example. We also have two other examples here. The middle one there we've talked about as well. That's nerve cells. The one at the bottom, that's me. I've tried to draw some what we call epithelial cells. And those cells have the job of covering organs and tissues inside the body. Now, if you were to have a guess as to what their structure, how their structure helps them carry out their function, you could have a think about what that might be. But as you look in the diagram, you can see that they're flat, they're thin, they join together quite well, so there's no gaps. That makes them ideal for being epithelial cells, for covering different organs. So all these different types of cells can make different types of tissues, not just the two at the top, all the different types of cells we make. They can become tissues, organs, organ systems, and eventually the organism. Now it's important to appreciate that after differentiation, the cells can divide, but they can't divide into any other type of cell. In, into any other type of cells. Cell division from then on is only for repair and reproduction and possibly to make more of the same type of cells, for example, during growth. Muscle cells cannot become nerve cells, epithelial cells cannot become muscle cells. So the cells lose their ability to differentiate. Now, if we look at another example of a living thing, that would be plants, we can compare how differentiation works in plants compared to animals. So Plants do need specialized cells as well, obviously. But the difference with plants is that in the what you might call the adult plant, many cells still retain the ability to differentiate. In animals, cells generally don't retain that ability. But in plants, many types of cells do. And you can find those kinds of cells in the areas that I'm just highlighting there. So you'll find cells that can differentiate in an adult plant in there. In, in those regions there and we often refer to that those areas as meristems or the tissue as meristematic tissue and we'll find those as we said at the shoot tip at the root tips and often by those side branches that we've shown in the diagram there 
and in theory cells from those regions and actually in practice as well cells from those regions can differentiate into any other kind of cell so important to highlight why differentiation is really important in important in living things not only in plants but also in animals so the key thing about cell differentiation is that it's very important because it produces cells that are specialized and once we have those specialized cells we can then produce uh, tissues and organs that carry out the correct job that's needed to allow an adult individual to function normally okay so that's an overview of cell differentiation and specialization and why it's important thank you for watching and i'll see you again soon